Hello everyone, this is Anna with Cottage on Oak, and I'm so excited you're here with me today. We are going to be decorating my table for spring, and I'm so excited. First, I bought this velvet green tablecloth with the trim and tassels off of Amazon for $35. It was such a great deal, and the product is great quality. I was watching a video by Krista Meeker. She's on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and everywhere. And she had this beautiful green tablecloth that she got off Amazon. And I thought, ooh, I want one off of Amazon. And that led me to finding this tablecloth. And her tablescape is amazing. This color does go with my, the color of my walls. It's, you know, lots of green going on. But I'm okay with that. I do love monochromatic. Although, in the end, you will see this isn't very monochromatic. Also, it did take me a few days to finish this project because we had, you know, things to do, places to go, kids to take care of. So we did have a few meals on the living room floor on a blanket, which was fun, and that's okay. I had to speed this up because this did take me like two minutes to fluff out. This is a garland I bought at Hobby Lobby for $12. It was 40% off. And I am shocked at how this garland looks so real. It just is such a great, great quality. I'm so glad I bought it and I can use it during any time of the year. I did buy these cloches over the summer at a yard sale. I believe the bigger one was eight or seven dollars and the smaller one was five. I shared this china set a while back. This was from my sister. Some neighbor gave it to her and she gifted it to me and I love it so much. Here's some thrifted forks and spoons. I can't quite remember how to plate or how to set forks and spoons. I believe it's you work your way out and in. So that's what I did, you know, spoons first, forks last. And then I have some linens to choose to place on top. And I bought these napkin holders at a yard sale. I bought the entire set for a dollar, I believe. Here are some of my dried florals that I'm going to cut some pieces off and place into the garland to give it a more fuller look and a springy look. These are some of the flowers that I have bought from Walmart in the past. They have come out with some blue ones, pink ones, and some purple ones, I believe, for the springtime. And they're so pretty. I, of course, love the white because they go with literally everything. And the wooden acorns I added earlier do give this a little woodland type feel, which is not what I was going for, but they add a little cutesy effect, and I do like that. Here is a little house teacup I bought this past summer for $5 at an estate sale. And I thought she would be cute under this cloche. But then I think I changed my mind and I wanted to try this basket full of flowers. But the basket was like a centimeter too big. And I was a little sad about that because I thought that would look cute. But I am glad that that did not work out because the basket does also give it a woodlandy effect. Then I decided to get into my dried rose stash and cut some of those off. I think I ended up using all of these in the garland. I thought I would only use a few, but I used them all. 
and I just poked them into the garland just gently and easily. It was so easy to do this. So if I think it's a great idea to have a stash of dried florals on hand at all times for whenever you decide to do something crazy like this. The idea I finally stuck with was putting my flower frogs inside the cloche. I'll call this a Beauty and the Beast Spring Edition. I will say, if you do not have any of these, I would definitely keep your eye out for them. They are definitely a staple for an old world home. I needed a few more flowers to finish this off, so I bought two $5 bouquets from Walmart. And I love this pop of purple against green. And I also had this dying bouquet from Walmart that I decided to take apart and repurpose. So this year we are wanting to fix up our kitchen floors. I think on the left you can see the old floors. They're, I believe it's called linoleum. They're like glued down and they are coming up, ripping up, peeling up. They are just awful and in desperate need of replacing. So there are some like faux tiles at Lowe's that I'm wanting to replace them with. And we had some people come look at the floors and give us a quote. And it just takes them forever to get back with you. I don't know what it is. I feel like it's all trades though. And they just take a long time. So I'm hoping, I was hoping they would already be done. But alas, they are not. And hopefully soon they will be and I can share that with you. I do know there are not as many tradespeople anymore as there used to be. And that is a need. So hopefully they will get to me sooner than later. And here I'm just trimming down the flowers. They were too tall. I kept the purple flowers inside the cloche only. I could have added them to the garland, but I wanted to keep the pop of purple inside the cloche. And I do that again with another color, and I'll show you that soon. I'm just adding some of these dried florals into the dead space of the cloche. And I absolutely love this. Let me know what you would have done different, what you would have added or taken away and let me know down below in the comment section and here comes our other pop of color i love this color i don't know what it is i used to hate it but on this flower it looks great As you could see, I added in some of those dried dead roses into the garland. I hope you love this. I am so in love with this. I want to keep it like this for forever, but it also makes me excited for the new seasons coming up to see what I can do and have fun with. I carried the pop of purple up on top of the mantle as well, just to keep it cohesive. And the saucers do not match the cups. I did that on purpose. I thought it was just fun little difference, but they do match the bigger plates. And I kept this pop of green color only on the napkins. Let me know what you think about that. Um, those little bear candles are beeswax candles I bought at a fair earlier. Not this year, it was last year. And I thought those were cute to add in for a little springtime fun. And here we have another project. 
I don't know what it is with me and switching out my kitchen islands, but here comes the third one. I love the one I have now, but I miss seeing my rug. So here's my son helping me out. I bought this sofa table off of Facebook Marketplace for $75, and it was a little too short. So I bought these casters from Walmart. I think they were $2 each, and my husband's just helping me screw those into the bottom. This was obviously before I started decorating my table for spring. The casters added about three inches of height, which was awesome. I wish it, they were a little bit higher, but that's okay. This is a great way to upcycle sofa tables because they are really, really pretty. And here's the before, my kitchen island. See, it's covering up most of the pattern of the rug. And that's okay, but let's just switch things up, open up the space for springtime. Also, I have a booth, so upcycling furniture, you know, it moves so quickly. Sometimes in the booth, sometimes I have stuff that sits in there for a whole year, <laughs> but that's okay. The wheels work great. And although it has wheels, I'm just having my husband help me pick it up and set it on top of the rug. And here you can see that most of the rug is being shown, which I love. And we moved the old kitchen island into the laundry room, as you can see here. I didn't put the shelves in yet, or the drawers. <laughs> and then I started moving these chandeliers that were sitting on my table. I was trying to doctor them up a little and clean them up. I bought those off of Facebook Marketplace uh, last year, I believe. You'll see those in my toy room here soon. Once you move one piece of furniture and replace it with another piece, you eventually have to start moving things around and cleaning stuff up. The big basket I had here that I picked up and moved used to be under my first kitchen island table. And I really liked that, so I wanted to move it onto this kitchen island that I have now, that bottom shelf. I follow a woman named Paige Confrontis on TikTok and Instagram, and her kitchen island has the shelf on the bottom, and I love that so much. So that's what I was trying to do with my kitchen. She also loves the old world French provincial type of aesthetic. And I will tell you, it is so hard to decorate this bottom shelf. I moved so much around. I tried different baskets, different pots, all kinds of stuff. I pulled out my stash here. <laughs> I tried it all. This is one of my larger, sturdier baskets, and I love it so much. And I was hoping it would look so good down here. But as you can see, it's just slightly too large. And that is one of my tips for the home. You just have to try stuff out. You have to move stuff around, even if you think, man, that's gonna look dumb. Just try it because you never know. The page woman that I follow, she has like baskets of rolling pins and all kinds of cute things standing up under her kitchen island. So I decided to move my basket of linen napkins from the counter just to keep it clutter free <laughs> and move it to the bottom of my kitchen island. Now this space is big and empty since I moved that larger basket to the bottom so then I decided to put this basket over here and it's still sitting there. It's kind of leaned up here. I ended up putting my eggs. We have five chickens, three hens, so we get quite a few eggs once spring hits and that's where I have started keeping them. So it's not perfect under here yet, but I'm just going to keep playing around and seeing what I think over time. So let me know what you think of this space. It's growing on me. I'll just keep working with it. Also, I bought off Amazon this huge bag of sprouted rolled oats, and it's great for your digestive system, and I love it. I just wanted to share that. So thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment down below. I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.